How's it going guys? We just got the latest update of full self-driving beta and today I'm going to test out does this car actually have the capability of plugging in an address, clicking a button, and driving you from point A to point B. Finally, we've got full self-driving beta unlocked. We're gonna test it here today in Santa Monica. Then we're gonna take it to LAX, the most stressful environment possible to see what this thing is really like. Tap the brake, hit drive, go ahead and click this button here. That'll activate full self-driving beta. Check it out. We've got this incredible display that recreates the live environment using all of the cameras in the Tesla. You can see all of the cars passing in both directions right here. Now, my car is blue, of course, but I set it to lime green so you can see it a little bit more clearly on the dash. Uh, other than stoplights that take a really long time, I'm going to leave this completely raw footage so you can see the full truth of full self-driving beta, the strengths, the weaknesses. Uh, I'm pushing this uh, to the limits. We're going to do roundabouts, we're going in the craziest cities, and then we're going to go to LAX. All right, the light turns green. I didn't even have to tap the accelerator. The Tesla is driving itself fully. Check it out. We've got all the lanes here. Red line showing uh, the boundaries of the driving area. We've got to get all the way over to the left to go on the California incline, changing lanes to follow route. So it's automatically changing lanes right now. I didn't have to click anything whatsoever. Upcoming lane change right now. Changing yet again. Now, every once in a while, it will have a little display, an alert that says, put your hands on the steering wheel. It's a legal requirement to basically make sure that you are not going to sleep or going in the back of your Tesla and trying to make it uh, full, full self-driving. It's a little bit misleading. I agree, the title, autopilot, full self-driving. It should be able to do everything with no human intervention, but that's just marketing jargon. I will say, there's an interior camera right here. That's monitoring your eyes. It's really good at detecting when you're not paying attention. If you pull out your phone especially, I'm not sure if there's programming in the camera itself to detect phones. I imagine there is, but it'll pretty much instantly trip the system uh, to make you put your hands back on the wheel if you are using uh, your phone. But if you pay attention to the road, as of course you should be doing, Pretty much, if you got your eyes on the road, this car will drive itself from point A to point B with very, very little intervention. All right, the light turned green. Signal just went on. Apply a slight turning force. The other option you can do instead of turning it is you just move the volume control or the cruise control knob. Uh, and that, all right, this is kind of scary. Turn, turn. Whoa. All right, that was a pretty difficult corner. There's a reason why I routed it this way in the GPS and it did it very, very well. Notice there's no right lane marker. There's no white line there. It still knows that obviously don't want to smash it into a wall. Now I've got a little bit of a love-hate relationship with full self-driving and I'll explain. When I originally got this car, the Model S Plaid, I had two options. You either pay $12,000 to get the full self-driving beta. I believe it might even be 15 grand now. I'll have to double check or you can pay a monthly subscription of $199 a month. So to save a bit of money, because I figured I wouldn't use it all the time, I decided to do the monthly subscription. All right, look, it's actually seeing that car. I thought it was gonna be awkward, but it totally figured out that situation. And I mean, look how complicated this is. It's showing the pedestrians crossing the street right now. It's showing a bicyclist actually on the screen, it shows them as a motorcycle lit them up in blue to show that it's a uh, object in the way. Doesn't recognize dogs, but I mean, that pretty much worked as good as it possibly could have. Now we're gonna take a left-hand turn here and continue on with our directions. <laughs> this thing, this is actually pretty darn crazy. I'm really, really impressed. All right, gonna make a left-hand turn here. Now, as I was saying, All right, coming up, left-hand turn. There's cars coming, so you gotta go quick. It's paying attention to the pedestrians as well. And that got us to our first destination. Okay, making a left-hand turn here, checking if the intersection is clear, which it is. And boom, accelerating through the turn with no intervention whatsoever. We're gonna go over to a roundabout right now because, let's see, hopefully this routes us through it. Roundabouts are a very interesting situation, even if you're a human being. So as I was saying before, 
I've got a love-hate relationship with the Tesla Autopilot. I bought the subscription uh, immediately when I got the car, and I have paid about 11 months of subscription. Noticing that car there. Now I am curious, I think it's gonna scrape the car. All right, I'm gonna hit the brakes because it doesn't know that my car is lowered, and that is a really, really steep incline. That's another problem which we'll discuss uh, in a little bit. But I paid for full self-driving beta for 11 months, so a better part of $2,000, more than $2,000, and I never actually got to use full self-driving beta until now. The reason being is, Elon said that you needed to get a certain safety score. Now, this is an awkward situation here where this guy is kind of parked. The Tesla doesn't really know what to do. Is that a real attempt at parallel parking? That. Oh, okay. I'm going to intervene here because this guy is doing a parallel parking maneuver that the Tesla just didn't understand. So once you unlock the subscription, that didn't actually mean that you got this level of full self-driving beta. Is this a serious parking job right now? It didn't actually mean you got full self-driving beta. What it actually gave you was the ability to do self-changing lanes. So not actually have to change lanes by yourself. It would steer, it would exit from the highway. You could use the summon feature, but that's about it. You couldn't actually use this functionality until you proved yourself I just raised the car up so I can get over this absolutely ridiculous incline. Now, is it gonna go really fast? Yeah, I'm gonna hit the brakes. So it doesn't realize when there's really steep dips and it was about to ram the front end of the car, even with the suspension raised, probably into that dip. So you do need to pay attention. Now, if you don't hit a certain safety score, which is very ironic, basically Tesla wanted to determine via a bunch of different data points, your turning, your acceleration, uh, your forced autopilot disengagements, etc., whether or not you're a responsible driver. And based on you being a responsible driver or not, it would give you a safety score. And you had to get a perfect safety score, essentially, to unlock full self-driving beta. Now, trust me, as a YouTuber, I wanted to make content on this immediately. So I tried every trick in the book to unlock full self-driving beta. And really, it became a game on the forums. Everyone talking about it basically was trying to provide the easiest way possible to reach uh, that score of 99 out of 100 on full self-driving. And it was really, really difficult. Essentially, you had to go on a 100-mile drive and then park the car uh, for the better part of a week. It's creeping very slowly. It definitely could have accelerated sooner than that. Uh, it was almost impossible to get. So I basically wasted $2,000 on full self-driving beta. Finally, they've unlocked it for everyone who has the subscription or paid for it. I do kind of feel like Tesla owes some people a little bit of a refund because when I initially paid for the subscription or the people who paid for 12 grand, uh, they didn't expect that. Interesting why it went so wide there. That was very unique. Uh, I didn't expect to have to prove myself in a near impossible test to get a feature that I paid money for. I think it's a little bit, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of that. All right, turning. I mean, the car has pretty much acted perfectly so far. The only intervention I've had to do was somebody doing a ridiculous parallel parking move where they're stopping in the middle of the street. I imagine I could have just waited there and eventually the car would have figured it out uh, and continued with the drive. But it's a little bit of a, a, an awkward situation. Now, what is it doing here? Why did it come to a complete stop? Okay, that was completely unnecessary. And it is guiding us around the roundabout. Tragically, the end of the destination is right here. But maybe if we type in a new destination, uh, it'll take us around. Um, oh, it's, it's going for some reason, even though I don't quite know why. All right, going around this roundabout. Now it's gonna decide to take a right turn. And then I think we're gonna show off what it's like to drive on the freeway as well as LAX, because the freeway is the ideal situation for this car. Now, every Tesla, if you don't buy the full self-driving, has lane keep assist. Now, we've got somebody coming right here, so hopefully the car doesn't run into him. No? If you click this button on all Teslas, it will actually keep itself in the lane, slow itself down, speed itself up. Um, so it is really, really good on highway environments, and I'm very confident with that scenario. This is still scary to me. I'm paying full attention because I don't want the car to crash into a pedestrian uh, or a dog or a bicyclist or something like that. How crazy is this? This is something I actually thought about prior to Tesla doing this full self-driving update. Uh, 
for the future of autonomous cars. And that is, will there be different levels of driving when it's fully autonomous? Some drivers are more cautious and defensive. Some drivers are more aggressive. Is there a Chris Harris mode that can drift you around? Is there a BMW douche mode where it doesn't have turn signals? Tesla actually did this, and I am so impressed. You can choose between chill, average, and assertive for the autopilot. So what does that mean? In chill mode, it says you will have a larger follow distance and it will perform fewer lane changes. Average will have a medium amount of follow distance and lane changes. And assertive, which we will put it in right now, it'll have the smallest following distance. It'll also make lane changes without asking. It says perform more frequent speed lane changes and will not exit passing lanes. So it'll keep us in the fast lane the whole time, which is really, really cool. About to hop on the freeway right now. All right, the light is green and we are off. This is one of the most complex turns uh, in all of the LA coastal area. Not sure what these people are doing, but it's essentially a U-turn, but we've got this kind of crazy divider in the middle here. So let's see what it does. And hopefully it doesn't curb my wheels right there. Okay, it's turning, it's turning. Oh my gosh, it's actually doing it. That is really impressive. I was not expecting that. It's automatically chosen the fast lane, which is pretty cool because I'm in the assertive driving mode. I wonder what happens if we put it into chill. Is it gonna take us over a couple lanes or not? I guess maybe not. Put it back into assertive mode. On the highway, it is so nice, so relaxing, especially in bumper to bumper traffic. You can really, really relax. It's the ultimate commuter car. If you've got traffic, you can pretty much not zone out. Obviously you need to pay attention, but you don't have to be as stressed about the driving experience the whole time. You really can relax and it really adds to the luxurious feel of this car. Now I will say, and my girlfriend Christine commented on it, that the acceleration and the braking isn't quite as smooth as a human being. It doesn't seem like it anticipates slowdowns far enough in advance and applies the brakes smooth enough. It's not gonna crash. It works very, very well, but the inputs aren't quite as organic as a human. It's not like it's trying to keep it as smooth as possible to not piss off your grandma in the back seat. It's pretty much just trying to survive out here on the road. But I will say with this latest update, it is doing so much better than when I first test drove the full self-driving beta in a Model 3 in Beverly Hills. It was an absolute uh, show for back of, lack of a better word. But in this case, it does really, really well. Confirm lane change to change out of passing lane. It's not gonna automatically do that because we are in assertive, but you know what? We're gonna go ahead and make that lane change because why not? All right, guys, we are at LAX now which is the most stressful driving environment possible in Southern California. Now I will say if you have an environment that you want me to test out the Model S Plaid in that you think would be more challenging and cause more failures, let me know. I have no idea what the car is doing right here, okay? I mean, with buses going everywhere, lane changes all over, people just parking in the middle of nowhere, this is pretty, pretty difficult uh, for the Tesla. I absolutely hate coming to the <laughs> Los Angeles airport. So if it can drive for me, that would honestly be awesome. Now, my least favorite part of autopilot is the fact that you only get five strikes. Now, what do I mean by that? If you have what they call a forced autopilot disengagement, which it's already happened to me once. Essentially, it thought I wasn't paying attention. This little camera here was looking at my eyes. It deemed that I wasn't paying attention for too long. And then it gave me a strike. Now, if you get five of those, they will take full self-driving beta away from you. I have kind of mixed feelings on this. Part of it feels like you're paying for something. It should be your responsibility to determine whether you're going to use it safely or not. This car has a thousand horsepower. You could just decide to go 200 miles an hour on a public street and crash into things. You have to determine yourself what is safe, what's not safe, what's illegal, what's not illegal. So it's a little bit frustrating that you pay for something and essentially, enough errors on my part, and I didn't mean to whatsoever. I, I, I truly think I was looking uh, directly ahead of me when it gave me that one strike. For them to be able to pull that from you after you've paid for it feels a little ridiculous. I mean, imagine if you buy a Ferrari and then Ferrari notices you've been speeding and then they just take the car away from you and don't give you a refund. It's a little bit what it feels like. But honestly, I'm very impressed with the overall system. The new update, the latest full self-driving beta does a fantastic job. 
it really can drive itself from point A to point B. It's making an aggressive lane change right now with a car behind me. Tesla, seriously, good job, and I can't wait to see what the future of Autopilot has to offer. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Like always, please browse the channel and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you next video. Bye.